Hello ladies, gentlemen and humanoids of all ages and welcome back to The Giant, The Hobbit and The Guidebook to Nowhere with both main hosts are back. Hello hey, to hey. The Hobbit. Hey hey. How's it going? Good, thank you. How's it going with you? It's going very well, thank you. What are the things we're going to be talking about today? That is The Vikings. The Vikings. No, but And the history of the Vikings, how they lived, what they did, that sort of thing. Bits and bobs, Bits yes. Bits and bobs, because you've you've studied about the Vikings to do with to do with your work and to do with what you're doing at uh, mm -hmm. at your school, and because uh, you're studying history and tourism, I believe, isn't it? I'm studying culture and heritage, which involves tourism and history. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And how how much of a role does the Vikings play in the heritage of Ireland? Is it quite a is it quite a big role? Would you say? It is quite significant, yes. We actually were a di high density, dispersed rural population. Yeah. Before the Vikings came, we did have a few small proto towns, is what they're termed, okay. with the monasteries. And these, and these, and these were, and these were Christian-based monasteries, and the towns around those to do with the faith, mm -hmm. was it? Yeah, but these were also big centres of trade. You know, they'd have markets there as well. And a lot of people come there on pilgrimage. Yeah. So these are what are termed proto towns. They're not mm. quite a town, yeah. but they're almost there. When the Vikings come, they really start hanging up the proto towns, and yeah. these develop to cities like Dublin, Limerick, Waterford, and Wexford. Okay, and and most of these towns that that to later turn the cities, they're all they're all water based cities because most of the trade would come up would come up on the ships, and you know, and you need a, a water water area to get rid of your waste and to, and, to, and to get drinking water from as well. So it's the most convenient place to put the towns at the start. Well, you need a large water source to drink, to mm -hmm. use uh, for agriculture, for many other reasons. Not really for waste, but you also have fishing yeah. there as well. And it was easier to travel by ship back in these times, even as far back as the Neolithic era. It was yeah. much easier to travel by ship than by land. Of course. So it's much faster. Yeah. And and the Vikings started started to be well known around I think it was the 8th century they they started really coming to their when they started to actually start raiding and it was all the way to the 11th century uh, was when they started to stop the the more raiding side of it and and be less known as the Vikings and more known as, as the Scandinavians and and became more political and more and more inter intertwined with 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 European history. Well, the Vikings were always raiders, and they actually started off as traders. Okay. And we believe Vikings started in the raiding when they would see neighbouring Vikings sailing up north mm -hmm. to hunt walruses for their ivory. Yeah. They'd make a note of the ship, and when they saw it coming back down filled with ivory, mm -hmm. they'd come out of their fjord, attack that ship, and bring the goods back. Mm. And they couldn't chase them back into the fjord because that'd be sheer madness. They don't have no idea what they're going to be going into. Exactly. So this would be termed going a Viking. Mm -hmm. And Viking, the word Viking actually comes from probably a inlet or a river or a fjord, okay. that word. And it should only be used for the Scandinavian people who raided. Yes. Unfortunately, nowadays it's been turned for all that whole culture. Of course. And at the time, they wouldn't understand you if you said, Where's the Viking camp? Yeah. But they would if you said, Where's the Norse camp? Yes. Because a lot of a lot of the Vikings and um, people who did the Vikings were, were, were small communities because most of Scandinavia was, was very inhospitable, was very inhospitable to agriculture. So, so was, there wasn't very much food available. And, yeah. So they would trade things like soapstone and iron predominantly, okay. which were plentiful in Scandinavia and in high demand everywhere else. Yeah. Now iron, of course, is used for tools and weapons, yeah. but soapstone is really valuable because it's soft yeah. and malleable, but it handles heat really, really well. Okay. And that means it's very good for molds, for things like jewellery and for making weapons and tools. Yeah. And the Vikings were big traders. It's their main thing. It's not at all the raiding. It's actually the trading mm. and the trade routes they had. They went all the way to Byzantium, which is modern Istanbul wow. in the east, up in Russia. They're the starts of Russia. And then all the way up as well 
far, far across to the west, yeah. and they landed in America, not somewhere where the climate was able to accommodate growing grapes and making vines and wine. Okay, interesting, because cause I, in I was doing a little bit of research, and what they said was that they made it to Canada, to the structures of Canada, because they had a base in mm-hmm. Greenland, which they used. The Inuits. Uh, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't specify anything about the Inuits, but it just said they made it to the coastline of Canada, and they dropped down a little bit further to um, mm-hmm. to Newfoundland, which is where they, which is where it is now, which is um, which is sort of the border between Canada and America, and that's where they reckon so far. Uh, just just from a little bit of research that I've done, that they, that's how far they reckon they've they've got to at the moment, sort of thing, because there are still facts and stuff because they found in Newfoundland that they, they they found traps. Uh, for 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 getting the buffalo and getting all stuff to fall into and capturing them sort of thing for food and for other animals as well. So I I personally I I uh, I'll, I'll trust you on the New York fact because I, I I don't. I, well, I don't know I'm not saying New York, but they had to travel far enough south that they could grow grapes. Okay. And have this in them. Now this is back in the past. The climate could have been different then, mm. and it couldn't be as far as we think. But we definitely have agricultural evidence yeah. for a place called New Ross. Point. Okay. And they've excavated there and they found evidence for the Vikings and they're keeping on going and they're still finding little bits and bobs. Yeah. Yeah, because because the, the interesting thing as well was with the um, with the trade, they also did a lot with uh, with hiring themselves out as mercenaries to other countries and yep. fighting on behalf of kings and counts and dukes at the time. They actually formed the high class honor guard for one of the Byzantium kings. And in a cathedral in Istanbul today, you can go and you can see Viking graffiti in ruins. Oh, what? (laughs) Yeah, because his elite bodyguard were Viking warriors. Norse warriors. Wow, that's that's insane how, how Byzantium king at the time trust you know more so trusted vikings to protect to protect him and his and his family than, than he did his own personal guard who grew up in the country well they were the best fighters this is that's true it. this is true that's the thing the best will always outweigh you know and they'll always because i'm guessing the scandinavian people in general uh, because how their how their population was dead because you had different religions with the scandinavian people you had uh, a lot of scandinavians which believed in the norse guards so Zeus, uh, Thor, uh, not Fre- Zeus. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Odin, Odin, Odin Frey. Thor, Freya. His sister Freya. Yeah. Frey and Freya are the gods of fertility. Yeah. Odin is the god of wisdom, yeah. and Thor is the god of uh, basically battle and yeah. thunder and lightning. And Loki His as well. His name actually means thunder. Yeah. And Loki's and Loki's the god of of uh, his god of tricks. Mischief. And, <laughs> mischief and yeah, yes. tricks and and. Um, so, so you had you had quite a lot of uh, faith and belief in that, but with the with the with Christianity coming through into Western Europe at the time, um, the and, and and the Vikings raiding uh, later on raiding the Christian churches because they had gold in there, they had money, they had you know food resources, they had so much in the churches. The mm-hmm. Vikings would attack and, and people as well, and, which were a resource back then. Of course, the slaves. slave trade was really big with the Vikings. It was, in fact, created the biggest slave trade center the biggest port in western europe and that was dublin city so so they used dublin city as, as a trading point for slaves yeah it was the biggest one in western europe it's the biggest viking settlement found in western europe is dublin city let alone york <laughs> and people always go on about york but it's like look at dublin yeah. but but a lot of people don't look at them because it's it's not perceived as as i don't know as, as a city that they would have Used even though even though they raided Ireland to pieces at the time because like it's it's a lot in Irish history is, is the raiding of Ireland and there's also there's an Irish film that was brought out with the um with the Vikings in it taking over Ireland and also the um the famous uh, book uh do, do you know what the famous book is it's the uh, it's a book that's the, the book of Kells the book of Kells yes yeah bro they didn't take over Ireland no no, there. no 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 it wasn't it wasn't taking over Ireland but it was like uh it was. It was it was the Viking raids on churches and places sort of thing. And mm. I think the Book of Kells was very highly, you know, and they were trying to protect the Book of Kells at that time, mm. which was uh, it's, it's interesting to watch. Uh, but uh, what, what the what, secret of Kells? Do you mean? Uh, that might be the film. The movie. Yes, yes. But 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 what I was trying to get into was because because they did so much raiding on on Christian places, the the whole of the Christian you know kingdoms that were that were getting up. 
started to uh, propaganda like a, a real savagery like uh, what was it barbarians with savagery you know no brains just muscles just coming to raid everything because because they kept attacking the churches well first of all i'll point this out it was never a religious thing with the vikings no it was just we were doing it ourselves yeah. in raids against petty wars in our kingdom here in ireland if one little country was going to war against the other sort of kingdom now they're not exactly countries yeah. they would attack the monasteries because these were the centers of trade of a lot of wealth yeah. and a lot of agriculture and grain of course um, and b but but because Food. of that because of that the the, the main churches so you, you had rome being the main the main papal state and and, and well the influence. it was right. split between the two you had rome and then you had byzantium across yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. And, uh, but like, I was just doing some, some, a little bit of research again, and they were, they were talking about the fact that the Vikings were portrayed in a certain way all the way up to about the 19th century to when Queen yep. Victoria came in and kind of going, no, 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 they're not like this at all. And then it became like these, these noble warriors that would go out and would, you know, would actually, you know, um, yeah, be, be noble warriors instead of the actual factions. They're just people looking to survive and looking to get you know, a bit of wealth in. Well, everybody's human. And yeah, you know, there's always a lot of bias in history. There's a lot of propaganda and you have to be extremely careful of your sources. Yes, of course. I mean, we mostly have sources from the Viking world of the annals here in Ireland. Those are our main ones. Yeah. And these, of course, are going to portray the Vikings in an extremely bad light because the monks who are writing the history are seeing the worst side of them. Now, this is a side of them that roasts abbots on spits yes. alive. The other side of them are people who trade, who married in with local native Irish women, yeah. who spoke both Norse and Irish and helped to become make Dublin one of the biggest centres for trade in Europe. Uh, uh, you yeah. know, so there's many sides. There's, you can't look at people as black and white, and you can't look at it as a society as of black course. and white. But even nowadays, we have we have these Viking films and these Viking series that are coming out, which, which I think, which I think is coming closer and closer to to actually being the way they actually are, like and, and being yeah, show more facts. Yeah. But um, but but I want I want to talk now about some of the myths that that mm. people still believe today. <laughs> so many. So many. I've I've only got about five or six myself. I'm sure you'll have. I'm sure you have a lot more. So, <laughs> the first one: Did Vikings wear horned helmets? No, no. never. <laughs> what did they, they actually didn't. wear? We actually have only found one Viking helmet in archaeology. Yeah. And it has no horns on it. We believe that most of them would have just worn simple leather coverings around their heads of to course. help protect them with padding, as the Vikings' tactics in fighting were being very lightweight, very, very quick, and yeah. these wouldn't survive very well archaeologically either, as they're very much organic material. Of course, and if they're in the ground, they're going to they're decompose quite quickly. Yeah, and most helmets, if they're metal, they're very, very high status people. Yes. And if you have a sword, you're very high status as well. Most Vikings, we believed, would have fought with spears or an axe, and swords are quite a status symbol. However, in Berka, while doing archaeological excavations, they have found a lot of swords, and these swords were bent so that they couldn't be used again. Oh, interesting. So was it? So that's sort of a debate against having swords as a rare form of weaponry for the Vikings. They could have been more common than previously believed. Interesting. So, so, so the swords being bent would that have been the Viking? So, so that wouldn't have been the Vikings doing. They they wouldn't have bent the swords. It would have been. Oh else. yes, of course. These are their burials. Oh, I see. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, because it, I guess it shows that, that that they no longer have to fight. That they fought until the mm. end. And so here's here's your sword, which no longer needs to fight. And of course, no one's going to go into the ground and rob it. Then are they? <laughs> of course, because there's, there's no volume. Because you've got to reshape mm -hmm. it, which is impossible to do. Well, it's not there is actually a bit of a mystery with Berka. They found a Viking grave there. It had two horses buried with the person. They had armor. Yeah. They had weapons with them. Yeah. And many other items associated with Viking warriors. Okay. And when they excavated the grave, they just sorted it as male. Because this is back in the 18th century. Ah. Any warrior, it's male. They came back recently and looked, and it is a female. Now, we don't know whether she was just pretending to be a man. Yeah. 
possibly not true, very unlikely, but still a possibility you have to factor in. Of course. She could have been a leader who led the military, who may not have actually fought, but was very as a warrior because she helped to lead and command them. She could have just been a very high status leader who's buried like this as a mark of respect. Yeah. Or she could have been an actual female Viking warrior. My which, personal favourite. Which would have been interesting because at that time you'd have had to be a very powerful person to join the ranks if you were a woman, I'm guessing, because it was probably it was, it was most likely a male dominated side for the warfare. Oh definitely. It, because most male of the women stayed, mo- most of the women stayed stayed at home and made sure that everything was going because men would be away for three, four, five, six months, eight months of the year. Even more than that sometimes, but yes. And then also And the like, women would be predominantly at home looking after everything yes of course and it's one of the reasons vikings live in family groups so you wouldn't just have parents and children living in a viking house you would have grandparents unmarried aunts and uncles and maybe cousins all these things and and that made the houses so big as well because the houses must have been quite big to accommodate everyone well they would be very okay they wouldn't be like massive <laughs> they'd probably be yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and okay. the vikings made their houses de- where the materials depended on where they were yeah. but the structure tended to say the same yeah so they would build a house one story bed slash sofas running each side yeah. but before each door at the two ends of the house you'd have a small circular d shape between the wall and the bed and in there would be a storage area in the middle of the house would be a hearth sunken into the floor and you might also have some planks or matting before the doors as well you'd have a triangular garden at least in dublin out in the back too and these might have a few other structures in there as well Mm, interesting Interesting. and would and would the fire pit be in the middle for um just for the to give the most amount of heat and light yeah Okay, so that, that that's kind of a very clear picture, then, isn't it? It's, it's a very it's a very simple structure, but it's it's, yes. it's made to incorporate everything you need to live. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and they often build in streets. Now there wasn't a formal street plan, we don't think, but they would have just added on to help keep everything together and help prevent wind blocks with the structures there. Ah, because because they live in a country where the, where the wind is probably one of the harshest things. Because you've yeah. got you've got snow. Dublin would be very marshy at the time as well. Of course, of course. And yes. Also near the coast, so you would have a lot of wind too. And the Liffey was almost three times, well, double the width it is nowadays. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's big. That's a massive mm-hmm. river. Yep. And um, and so another point I want to bring up with the Vikings, uh, because because we're still carrying on with the myths, is um, oh, I'm, I'm just going to grab my list up because I've just got to double check to make sure what I'm saying is correct and just to let you know bro the yeah. fact that they didn't work as an army they did it was one section of the Vikings that did it was the Danish Ah. and they were the only group to work as an army and that's because of Charlemagne Yeah. and Charlemagne had basically taken over all of Europe and he was looking at Denmark because they're not Christian we want them to be Christian <laughs> how Bluetooth started to build up defences train the Vikings to work as an army mm-hmm. And he built huge forts. I mean, these things are absolutely insanely big. Yeah. They could hold thousands of Viking warriors wow. all across the edge of Denmark. But he eventually realized even this was not going to stop Charlemagne, basically all of Europe, yeah. <laughs> from conquering Denmark. It's nothing he could do about it. So he converted Denmark officially to Christianity. Uh, okay. And he started to spread it in the country in order to protect the country from invasion. This led to him writing a rune stone, remarking the event, and it's the first record of Denmark being seen as an individual country and where it gets its name. Wow, that's incredible. It's called Landmark. And so, when was the um, when was the when was the date that this happened? Because I'm guessing this is this is quite late into it. Because this is later on. Yes, I'm not exactly sure of the date, so I'm not going to say. Yeah. Because I could be wildly off. Because 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 I, I checked some of the facts and it said the ra- it was around the eleventh eleventh century that they started to more 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 confer- uh, confirm conform into country based 
uh, living rather than just individual towns and villages and stuff and it became more, more of a city state and then more and the more you know kings started to rule over it again sort of thing which and then and then, and then started to introduce themselves onto the world stage more so than just being because at because when vikings were around um the term vikings was only implemented into some of the some of the towns it wasn't it wasn't everyone that was being vikings it was only specific peoples that were that were doing viking yeah the people who were raiding yes. others were just traders and were termed as the norse yes. and they would create settlements and they would integrate into society yes now of course raiders would be among the norse but who could tell you exactly know? it's it's it's, it's so, so you can say everyone's a norse that's fine but you can't say everyone's a viking it's it's only some people that are vikings mm. and uh yes which, which comes to another point is were most of were most people filthy and unkept which is a, a theory which they brought in well okay this all comes down to personal standards of hygiene yeah. this is the middle ages for the middle ages they were spotless the only people who could sort of beat them were those who are living in the middle east muslim countries who it's a whole part of their culture being very clean very admirable yes the Vikings were very clean in comparison to most people at the time. They washed at least once every week. But the style of washing might not suit some people. They did have soap, but they would bring a hot bowl of water, was brought by the lowest person, yeah. to their leader. He would wash his hair, his face, snort and spit into the water. Ooh. This water would then be brought to the next second person. Wow. And then so on and so forth. This is recorded by Ahmed ibn Fadlin when he encountered the Norse. He was an Arab trader. Yeah. When he saw this, he was, of course, disgusted, coming from where he was from. <laughs> but compared to most people at this time, he was very. they were very clean people. Yes, of course. And and they maintained themselves very highly, which was which is really mm -hmm. interesting to know. Oh, they really... They were vain, in a way. <laughs> they liked to make sure they looked good. They had a lot of jewellery, a lot of personal ornaments. They would wear their wealth more than anything a lot of the time exactly because they want to show how well well off they were and, and compare mm -hmm. because yeah that, that's that's fantastic that's a fantastic thing to know uh do you have any more facts and myths to to tell us then okay let me think a myth about the vikings hmm. uh, it's just that there's so many oh yeah one i heard which is a corker the Vikings were the first people in Ireland. No, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> yes, no, no. The whole Gaelic language. Yes, yes. The Vikings ended up with their own language. <laughs> no, the Vikings were not the first people to come to Ireland. <laughs> no, the, no, they were not. We had people coming in after the ice receded, the third ice age, just like the rest of Europe eventually. Yep. Now, we had... You had to look back to folklore and mythology to try and figure out what might have happened. But we believe we had people settling in the Stone Ages and then later on the Celts came. Yeah. We now think this is the most recent theory that they came up from the Algarve and well, had that... a huge trade route all up and that it started here. The whole Celtic sort of system and culture started here in Ireland. Okay. And spread across. Now, of course, Celtic is like saying Viking, but I'll just keep it simple. <laughs> and then they spread across to Europe because the Celtic archaeology we have in Ireland hmm. is Bronze Age. Hmm. It's not Iron Age, and Celts are meant to be Iron Age, so therefore we're earlier than everywhere else. So technically, the Celts were never in Ireland, but probably it might have started here, the whole thing. And not in Halstatt and Litten. Now, of course, people in Europe don't like to hear this. They'd like to think it started there, and who can blame them? <laughs> but we found evidence of the Algarve that this might be true. Yeah. So, uh, fingers crossed here for Ireland. <laughs> of course, because we love that. And, like, the, the Celtic language was a massive language. Like, it, it, I, I was watching a video, like, languages across Europe and all that sort of stuff. It became a massive part of Europe for quite a while, the, the Celtic language. Well, Celtic languages, it changes. I mean, you've got all the European languages, and most of the time it would have been Celtic, and the languages today are derivatives, mostly of these languages, and then some Latin, and it's all mixed in together. Yeah. And but, also, you know, you would... Uh, so, 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 sorry, I was just going to say, and also the uh, the Viking language quite influenced uh, English uh, to, to, to a more extent, because yeah. cause there are quite a lot of Viking words which are now English words. A, a lot of the swear English words... English has been... Heavily influenced 
by so many languages. It's insane. French, German, Italian. Norse, yeah, Celtic. So, so many languages have influenced English. It has, it has. It's, it's such a big variety of mixed languages, which is so funny because, like, um, I was, was going to say, it's like, let's... Uh, because there's such a huge mix and, and such a huge um, density, it's and there's so many different mm. different words in there, and it's like, ah, oh, where did this word come from? Oh, it, it came from like over there, like eight hundred years ago, and it slowly started to change <laughs> change meaning, and now it's this word. Oh, I wish it was that easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm I'm making it very simple. It's like, um, but I, I think a lot of the swear words because of how they're said, um, the, like. Um, not wordsmith but the people that research the languages and stuff ca can can mm. relate it to the vikings at the very least there's a lot of the swear words it seems that's new to me <laughs> i i'm not sure if that's fact or not so so again do not quote me but i i swear i heard that for quite a, for quite a few times but uh but uh yeah i'm, I'm just I'll gonna take that with a pinch of salt <laughs> i'm gonna take that with a maybe it's gonna be it's like it's like a 49 percent maybe i'd say less <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, forty-nine percent's fine because if if it's fifty or above, that means I'm more sure. But I've no, no, I'd say sure. it's about like <laughs> ten. No, 10%. forty-nine, forty-nine percent. No, <laughs> Another, a, a myth made by me. Yes. <laughs> um, you read it online. It wasn't even made by you, bro. <laughs> shh, shh. I, no, I, uh, I didn't actually read that online. I just, I just heard that in conversation when I was talking to people about stuff. This was a long time ago. So it's something just stuck in my head. Um, okay. What else was I going to say? Uh, da -da -da, Vikings, Vikings, Vikings. Um, what was some of the most influential stuff they had to do in Irish and English history? Okay. Well, obviously, I'd say personally, trade routes. Mm -hmm. That they brought so many things from so far away. Yeah. Though... Um, the centres they built. Yep. They also were heavily influenced by Europe and current events. I mean, everybody is, but they also helped to influence those events. They would be... They generally just started to assimilate into the world, and they didn't go away. They never go away. Yeah. There's still small, small traces of this culture and every culture around the world, if you look hard enough. Um, it's hard to think of what they influenced most Ooh. Oh, I've but got there's one. little traces of them everywhere i i got one i got one i i, I know something i do what <laughs> they made some of the best ships at that time in the whole world that's a given bro these were the best things ever made at that time in the these are like the cutting edge technology it's like building a spaceship in the seventh century, like in the seventh century AD, they 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 would get like twenty logs, split them down the grain, and and get them perfectly matched up so so they run completely the same, and then they would, and they'd uh, fan over, use tar, iron iron um, iron uh, uh, nails. That's that's the right word, and then um, and, <laughs> and, and and they invented they, this is one of the things that they invented, which the uh, which the yachting association credit them for. Is a structural beam that runs along uh, from the bow to the a stern. Keel. Just, just it, it, it is the keel. It's the keel, which is a structural beam <laughs> that runs from the bow to the stern and sits lower <laughs> than the main body of the ship. This feature in increased the speed and stability, and prevented unwanted, uh, unwanted lateral movement, sort of thing, which made them so much faster than, than their competitors, mm. and just made them in incredibly, incredibly quick so anyone who had ships just could not catch up to them be like just try to try to like because you know the these towns and these cities that have been raided they want to get back at the vikings but they just couldn't catch up to them because the ships are so much slower yeah i'm not sure about the keel thing i haven't heard that but i do know that these were masterful masterful pieces of creation they were also astoundingly beautiful as well as functional yes, yes. And the biggest Viking longship ever found was very, very big. Now, when I'm saying this, if you look at your living room in general, the length of that could hold about 16 Vikings less. Uh, it's hard to say. I don't know what people are looking at here, and I can't really do well with meters and feet. But say the stretch of your arms, you would have at least two Vikings in that. Other side, four. 
Yeah. So just in that area, you've four Vikings. Wow. This ship could have held about a hundred and something more. What? It was absolutely massive, this ship. Now, this is sort of the last hurrah yeah. of the Viking ships at the time. And these were amazing things because not only would they never stop because they could use both wind and rowing man power. And oars, yes. And oars, yes. But they were, as you said, amazingly built. So they're sleek. They had a very little draw weight. This meant that they could get up rivers and streams very shallow. Yes. And get much further up rivers and then just run away. All they had to do to turn the ship is lift up the mast turn it round and put it back they didn't have to turn the ship oh that's an, oh, that's an ingenious they idea just to move go. ships oh. so um, um uh, something that one of one of our subscribers has put up uh Shuram, he was also uh, taking Caldergrim into Iceland and the Faroe Islands as well um, he said he said not to forget that which is also an interesting point oh yes of course actually a lot of Iceland genetics a lot of them are Irish because of the safe trade from Ireland to Iceland yes. and to these northern areas, and the, and, and the marriage, yeah. So 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 men so men marrying and taking Celtic women back home mm -hmm. and taking yeah. them off, and they were also one of the first ones to inhabit Greenland as well. I, th I think we talked about it before, but yeah, uh, they but, are which is, indeed which is incredible. And actually, one year the ice came back and they pretty much all died, but we haven't found any bodies. It just empties after a certain date. There's no one there. So, well, they're all gone. Well, <laughs> They probably run. Well, it's kind of getting a bit bad. It's kind of worse than home. Oh look, we've got a ship. Yeah. Let Let's kind of hurry off back home quite quickly, otherwise we're gonna be in a lot of trouble, guys. I'm not well, like... actually, they followed a guy who was tasked with murder, and yeah. he sailed over to Greenland. And the reason it's called Greenland, even though Iceland should probably be called Greenland and yeah. Greenland Iceland, yeah. is that when he went back, because yeah. after three years you were allowed to come. Oh, okay back yeah. no sorry he risked coming back it was very dangerous but he did come back and he wanted to get loads of other vikings to come with him yeah or norse to come with him so he said this place is called greenland it's amazing <laughs> there's such cool stuff there it's like heaven come on over lads you'll love it and they didn't really love it but they stayed anyway why i mean like you, you go there it's snow so he apparently he burnt the ships he burnt the ship, so, so he forced them to stay there. Yeah. What? And they survived, and they stayed, and they settled, and they kept on island hopping and going bit by bit until they came to America. Please tell me they killed him for what he did. I don't think so. But in the Viking society, yeah. if you killed someone, you could stay and plead your case at a thing moat, yeah. which is a huge gathering of Vikings yeah. at a large meeting point, which is called a thing, and a moat is the gathering of Vikings. Norse, yeah. and they would judge. And if you were able to say, "Look, this guy! Oh my God, you will not believe how freaking yeah. stupid and angry he made me! Yeah. I couldn't help myself. He just had to die." <laughs> then they'll say, "Okay, you're banished for three years." Yeah. No, no, but but then what I was saying was that is you that, can come back. Is that this guy burnt down the boats? He 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 he, he drew all these Vikings here to live here. Right? Yeah, yeah, you guys. Yeah, just go have a look. Yeah, I'm just all oh, these torches. It's just for light. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know what happened. Um, okay, relax. You might not have burnt them down, but something like that happened. Anyway, they stayed. <laughs> I was going to say, like, if, it, if that happened, I don't think the Vikings would much care if they did, you know, if, if someone did kill him. Like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're just, we're just going to turn around and look the other way. Oh, he's dead. Oh, no. He was out in the cold all night. Yep. <laughs> oh, no. It's, it's, it's funny, though. Um,. So yes, they they did a lot. Of, uh, they did a lot of island hopping over to America, in which in which they went up to Canada and hit parts of America as well. And, mm -hmm. and having said that, bro, just to let people know, yeah. they have found oh Ogham. Now Ogham, for those who don't know, is an Irish script. A lot of Ogham stones are found in Kerry, in particular, and some in the rest of Ireland. They tend to be stronger along the west coast. Yeah. But they have found Ogham stones in the centre of New York City. Wow. And these date from the right time period for Ogham. So it could be that St. Columba actually did freaking go over to America. Oh, uh, St. Columba, yeah, because that's, 
that's not that's not this that's, that's mm-hmm. not Columbus that is Columba which is no, uh, the Columba yes an Irish guy yeah and we have yet to have someone go over and translate it seriously Yes, but we just found yeah. this old Viking thing in New York City. Oh, it's not that important. We got other stuff to look at over here. We got we got more stuff. No, it's not there. Viking. It's Irish. It's predates oh, Irish. Vikings. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. So, so the Irish yeah. were one of the first to go over to 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 New York specifically. Possibly, possibly, possibly. Or could they not have taken one of the stones and had it with them and just chucked it in New York? What, dude? Why? Why would you bring? An ohm stone to New York. That that's just stupid. <laughs> Maybe they just liked it. Like, yep. The Vikings like, I'm gonna have this. No. No, bro. <laughs> don't do something that's stupid and impractical. Oh, um, one of the uh, our, one of our viewers um was saying that the geothermal studies proved that Greenland was in fact green where the Norsemen settled. He says, which is Yay. something you have to look at. <laughs> well, it was still pretty cold and icy, and at the time. Iceland would have been better, but yeah, yeah. But Thank I, you I, for letting us know I, that. I, I guess that I guess they would have been more used to it. It would have been inhabitable, yes. Yeah, yeah. They'd be like, oh, it's lovely here. I mean, it's like two degrees warmer than than everywhere else that we lived. I mean, it's much warmer than Russia. I mean, this is great in comparison. Really, where did you find this geothermal study? Uh, we'll have to ask the gentleman himself, my good sir. Please do send on a link. I'd love yeah. to see it. If you put if you put the link up in the chat, we will we will check it out, and we will we would love to have a look at it, which would be great. Uh, some other facts about the about the uh, the old Vikings is they they reckon one of the furthest points they ever got to, in in the world was Baghdad. Was, yep. was nowadays Baghdad. Baghdad definitely. And, th- and that's where the that's where they reckon the furthest that they, they went traveling because I know I know because which was really interesting because uh, Baghdad is in India if, if I am correct mm-hmm. I think I am. Which, which... But along this Great Silk Road, actually. They found a burial in China. Yeah. And the guy had red hair and was wearing tartan. No. Yep. That's insane. Wow. And it really it really shows. It really shows the um it, the, the 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 scope and the amount of tenacity they had to go mm. and travel and to, and to go and see and to go and trade. Like like the amount of energy they had. Yeah. And also yep. um, another fact as well. Um, so we, we have talked about the fact that the Vikings did a lot of trade, a lot of mercy, and and some tra- uh, some uh, raiding and, and taking of uh, taking of gold and jewels, but they also mm-hmm. did quite a bit of farming. Like they would come home from these raids yep. and they would work in the farms. They weren't just a warring nation. They would actually come back, hoe the ground, grow the food to to survive the winter. Yeah. Of course they would. Of what course. else would you do? But the thing is, a lot, a lot of people have this view of them of just being this, this warring group and, war, and warring mm. people that would just all the time just be going back and coming back with all the, all the loot. But they'd, they'd actually grow their own crops and rear their own animals at home as well. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people don't. Yeah, you know, of course. A lot of people they don't. really like cows and sheep. Well, it makes sense. I mean, sheep, she, uh, sheep skins to keep you nice and warm. You know, cow wool. leather. Sheep wool. No, no, no. Sheep skins. You know, to actually put down your flooring. Fleeces, yes, but wool mostly. I mean, sheep it'd be skin. a very old sheep. You'd take the skin off that had died. You're not gonna waste and, having and, more wool. And uh, and cows would be for leather as well. And, and leather would be. Amazing. Well, yeah, leather, meat, dairy, and also the bones. Uh, everything of would be used of as course. an animal. Nothing at all would go to waste because. Your time is extremely valuable, and the time you put into these animals means that you don't want to waste anything you produce. Okay. And oh. also, you have very limited resources, so you can use whatever you have. You have to. You have to use everything. Good. So, a couple more interesting facts from from one of our from one of our subs. He's saying that the Irish were, were the first from Europe. However, the the Rioton tribes were there way before anyone else, and New York was from. Oh Irish yeah, of as course, Rioton of Bay. course. I'm just talking about from. Western Europe. I'm not talking about anywhere else. <laughs> yes, which is uh, yeah. So, so from the Western Europe before Columbus, before the Vikings, the mm-hmm. Irish were one of the first ones to to hit to hit America, which is amazing because if it, the own stone is right, if, I if, if or if someone's yep. just made an own stone chucked in New York, we'll have to check that out. But uh, but it's it's very interesting because a lot of people don't get taught that in schools and don't get taught the fact mm. that 
Christopher Columbus wasn't actually that big of a deal, really. I mean, the Vikings, with their technology, nope. were... He thought he found India. I know, I know, it's insanity. And hence why he called all the Native Americans Indians, because he thought he was yep. from India. Ah, oh, yes, look, I've, I've done it. Uh, no, no, you, no, you haven't. No. Well, the thing was, also, another fact about Christopher Columbus, getting off base now, he didn't actually find America. He found the islands close to America. So he did all the Caribbeans yeah. and hopping around and... He was an mm-hmm. atrocious person. He killed, like, the first island he got to, the natives welcomed him in, gave him food, and because he was there looking for gold. There wasn't oh, there. just leave Columbus out of this, bro. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. It's a whole other backstory. I know. We'll have to talk about that at another point. Uh, but no, so so the Vikings were very tenacious. They, they were very mm-hmm. ingenious in what they did and, and how they, you know, and, 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 and the way they must have traded because... They, you know, they, they they would have done it to their benefit all the time to you know for mm-hmm. food, for resources, and for learning as well because they they were they were very smart people, like they oh, were yeah. stupid. Everybody, well, look, you know what? You have smart and dumb people everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you do, but uh, but but they. I def- mean, you do have Olaf the clumsy who killed himself <laughs> while eating breakfast in bed with a knife. <laughs> hey, that could happen to anyone. Okay, it's. it's Oh God! Did you stab yourself? You did. Didn't I you? I did no such thing. I I I I admit to nothing. You did. You stabbed yourself with a spoon. I I I I say no such thing. Ah huh, wait! When did I stab myself with a spoon? What? I don't know. I just remember. I know you poured soup all over yourself at one point. Hey! Anyone knocks a bowl of soup onto their lap? Okay. Anyone can do that. <laughs> oh, here we go. Um. So by Kobe Beck is it's from the gist. So it is. It's the uh, it's the green. Uh, so it's the uh, grist. Uh, talked about climate spectic. Uh, spectic green. Green needs to be green. Don't judge a book by its cover, much less a land by its name. So this is um, this is a cover about about um, climate change. So you can check it out. Um, mm-hmm. It's by Kirby Thank Beck. Thank you very much for that. On December sixteenth, two thousand six. So that, that's that'll be very interesting. I'll be. Uh, I'm going to be reading that at some point, which would be great. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of dendrology reports and pollen dating from that one. Ha <laughs> ha, cool. <laughs> oh, yes, there's going to be so much information data down there. Thank you so much, good my good sir, for sharing that information for us. Okay, so you must have. do you have a few more facts about the Vikings and the Irish for us? Okay, let me think. Um... Well, I do have one fact that's a bit interesting. The Vikings themselves, now this isn't the Vikings and the Irish, but when they dig Viking graves, they find some women with heavy metal metal spindles. Spindles? Or, yeah, yeah, spindles. And these spindles are what hold the wool while they're weaving. Now, these iron spindles would not have worked because they're too heavy. Only wooden ones would have worked to help weave. So we believe that these were probably given to women who had a major role in influencing maybe marriage deals, maybe okay. seeing into the future or some religious rites, because they do have Norse mythology, the Norns, and yeah. the Norns are three women who are said to weave the fate of men. Now, this is remarkably similar yeah. to Greek mythology, but these are the Norns. And... This might be a symbol that they hold the same power, that they influence the fate of people in everyday life. Interesting. So, so they're seen as prophets and, and, and women of of great of great um, far, you know, uh, far sight and, and great wisdom, sort of thing. It's it's possible. Yes. I'm not saying it is. No, it's no, a but, but it's, it's a very it's a very interesting idea because yeah, if if that's if that's the case, then you know it it does change up a lot because. Wow. Yeah. So, 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 living. I guess that's similar to to the Greeks and how they and how they had prophets and how they had women who would um, mm. uh, foresee the future and they'd be great women of power. And uh, well, really, mostly being honest, it would be monotheic religions with you know the almighty male god that don't really let women into. Yes. You know, rights uh, to do with religion. Most pagan religions are most pre. You know. Um, yeah. Most, yeah, most religions to do with nature and respecting it don't have this imbalance between male and female within the structure. Exactly, and it's and 
and the females quite highly high regarded. So like all the Norse gods, you have you, you got female Norse gods. It's the same with pagans, and the same with um, mm-hmm. and the same with uh, what was I going to say? But of course, it has to be noted the male gods do tend to come first, of course, <laughs> and be the most yes. powerful. <laughs> Which is interesting because there's there's another culture with the Greeks with the Spartans. They the, the women were were would have been would have been highly regarded in the um, were highly regarded within the Spartan society because a, well wo- women would have actually been dressed up as men to look like men as part of the regiment on, on their wedding day because this is seen as a sign of respect that he respected her yeah. as much as he respected the people he was fighting with and the people he was fighting with would be the people who have grown up since birth this is the per- people he is the most loyal to in the world he cannot be anything else but extremely loyal to these people they are the center of his world yeah. so this is a way of showing that she's the center of his world yes because... So there is still, with Sparta, the most focus is on this warrior persona and on fighting as a unit. Yes. And, uh, and what I was going to say as well is because one of the reasons why women were highly regarded and respected is because only a woman can, can birth a man. Like, yeah. It, they are the only ones that can, that, that, that can produce a Spartan Procreate, army. Procreate, yeah. specifically. And they were given, and they were Carry given rights, children. and they were given, they were given special regard to and they were able to voice their opinions and we were able to do a lot of things which a lot of other societies mm. in, around in and around greeks they weren't like and that's something interesting well being honest bro yep. a lot a lot of other greek societies were the opposite athens yep. where democracy was founded would only allow women to go out for funerals to meet other women or to get food yeah. or do uh, other tasks like uh, that Otherwise, they were not allowed to leave the house. And, and that's what I was saying. Because women were not allowed to be educated yeah. either. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Because Spartan women were allowed to do this, they, they were held in such high regard compared to Greeks, other Greek societies, is what, I, is what I think I said. That was what I said. Or, if I didn't say that, that's what I meant to say. Sorry, bro, you're dropping out a bit. Ah, sorry about that. So I'm just going to reset it again. So what I was, what I was trying to say was, is that the Spartan society held women up a lot more compared to other Greek societies at that same point in yes. time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the same, and, the, and again, I mean, probably the same can be said again in Viking societies compared to societies that, that had taken God on as religion because... Well, no, we can't just focus it on religion or monotheic religions. I mean, there's still a lot of indiscrepancies around the world. You know, it, it's just something that happened you can't really place it on a specific religion or anything like that and i know you're not saying that but you know it's just been there and it's part of history yes yes and um so any any more facts we can think of any more any more information the vikings did have women who hello hello sorry (laughs) That's okay. Yeah, yeah, you were dropping out there for a second. Could you repeat I that? I can't hear us? you. Uh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you, can you, can you hear me now? Um, little bits and bobs, you're a bit crackly. Ah, uh, you're, you're a little bit crackly too. It should, or it's all running fine, so it shouldn't be any issues. Now, well, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> can you hear me the now? The mysteries of technology. Uh, the, the horrendous, abhorrent annoyances of technology because you don't have ethernet i need ethernet I need a good internet connection at some point <laughs> uh so could you could you restate what you're saying about women again in the viking you, you're saying something about women there well women would have looked after the home while their husbands were away they could divorce their husbands but in viking times in their world and in their lifestyle yeah. you have to realize it's even more crucial that the husband works and that he helps because if not, her and the children are going to starve. And it's not like in other societies where they could do other things and they might have other resources because of where they are, literally in the world, in these very harsh environments. They could divorce their husband simply as a practical means of survival. You can't doom someone to die because the person they married turns out not to work at all. And is a lazy, a lazy so person. So you yes. have to do something else. That's and incredible. so Viking women could divorce their husbands. Yeah. They have well, music would have been a very big part of Norse culture. Now, unfortunately, I don't know any particular songs, 
But the Norse would use a lot with an oral tradition. Yeah. They would have a lot of songs. Each one would have been passed around and spread and going popular. A lot of them would be oh, okay. saying, <laughs> this guy and, you know, he's so rich, isn't his wife really nice? They're so kind, they're so welcoming. You're great, you're great people. And this would be spread around and boost their reputation as well. Wow. You also have other traditional songs probably dealing with Norse religion yep. and just playing, you know, oh, do you remember this lad and this story and this tale and this song, isn't this one a great top of the pops? Great. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know too much about it, so yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do know a little bit about Viking mythology, though, if anyone would like to hear about that. I'm, I, I'd be more than happy to hear about that, because I'm guessing you know, you know a lot about the, the Norse gods, then, would be the mythology. All right. A little bit. Now, of course, things change and alter, but the Vikings believed that we lived on a plane called Midgard, yeah. and there were other realms above us and below us on the world tree called Yagrasil. Now, I probably pronounced that wrong. Uh, I apologize. Uh, Yagrasil. Uh, I've got it in my head. That's like, it's really, really, really well. And these worlds would be the worlds of the ice giants, world of fire. They would be as, Asgard. they would be Valhalla, yeah. Asgard, <laughs> within which was Valhalla, yes. where the Viking warriors would go after death. If they had, had a wordy death, yeah, and in there. Valhalla, they would drink, yeah. and they would fight, yeah. and they would feast yeah. <laughs> until Ragnarok, which is the end of days, yeah. where everybody would get up and fight. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully not die. Well, or die. well they're definitely going to die. This is the ending of the world, <laughs> is Ragnarok. <laughs> it's a very or end Ragnarok. point. Ragnarok. Sorry. Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Yes. And they would have the gods fighting in Ragnarok as well. Yeah. So that would be Thor with his Halmer Miljurnir. Yeah. And he would be riding his chariot pulled by his two goats, who he kills every evening to eat and are resurrected the next day. <laughs> I did not know that. That is amazing. <laughs> I would love that to see. Yeah. That. I would love to see that in the, Mar in the Marvel film. Sorry, I'm just gotta kill my goats. Just. Yeah, I'll just, just, I'll yeah. Don't, don't, don't worry, they'll be here tomorrow. Yes, it's fine. I'm, 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 Forget the hammer, resurrecting goats, goats. people. <laughs> I mean, come on, resurrecting goats, that's so cool. I would, I would love to have a resurrecting goat. I mean, and <laughs> Odin, of course, had his two companions of two wolves and also two ravens called yes. Hunden and Munden. Yes. Hunden and Moon spies. So, so, so I'm very much guessing that Loki did not like them at all. No, oh, no, that's Odin. No, 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 uh, so, no, what I'm saying oh, is, yeah, is, is, yeah, is that, is that, is that, is that the raven Loki flying is around? Loki the god of mischief, of yeah. course. Loki would be like, God damn it, they're flying around again. God damn it. Ah, oh, gonna be good, gonna be good. Stop watching me, Dad. Stop watching me, I want to do some evil stuff. Well, Loki's meant to be chained up at the moment. Yes. With he's... the entrails of serpents with venom dripping down <laughs> onto him, but it's caught in a bowl by his wife. <laughs> Wasn't it also the Vikings with the uh, with a snake with with eating itself? Isn't that something to do with the Vikings? Or is that something else? Yeah, but it was also, I believe, a Greek sign before yes. it was Viking. They also had the, well, yes, the swastika. Swastika was a Viking sign ever before. It might have been from the coming over from Hindu, but they used it as well. It's a sun sign. Meant to bring good luck and prosperity until, of course, we have all the dogma coming along in yeah. modern history yes. with that symbol. Because that's the thing, a lot of symbols have been taken and misrepresented to the point mm. where now it's seen as a poisonous thing to state or talk about. just like just Including like, the pentacle. Yes, because that, that scene is the devil thing, whereas it's just, it's, it's a druid, it's a druid sign. It, oh, it was, was uh, not exactly druid, it's more, I think, Greek because Venus... Yeah follows that shape every five years in the sky yeah and when the greeks found this out they were freaking out like oh look at this this is so cool this is so cool and of Guys, course you got all so the damn rounds da vinci code yeah you know goddess worship stuff yeah. there too <laughs> but the pagans were using it as well around the same time period though and pagan religion did mm -hmm. have did have the uh, did have that symbol I wouldn't be too sure, and I can confirm that personally. Yeah. But we do have plenty of symbols for us here in Ireland. We like our swirls, we really do. <laughs> Everything curvy swirly. lines, Ooh, Curve. curvy, woo, woo, woo. curvy, curvy. Oh yeah, man, we have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, that's probably where it comes from. 
looking back at Neolithic designs uh, in archaeology in Ireland, it's yeah. seen as symbols you see once you've entered the first sort of state of drug taking. Yeah. The, when you've had taken a mild drug, you see these shapes and these swirls, so they think this is where it comes from. I could so see the pagan Irish doing that, you know. Guys, look what I found. It, it, it makes us see swirly things. I love swirly things. Like in Terry Pratchett, where the guy's sitting down and he sees a trunk come along <laughs> and he tells his religious leader, it's a practice, you know, he's a guy learning how to do all this. And he goes, his leader goes, well, some people have seen a stream and they follow this. Some people have seen the goddess Edda and they follow her. No one has freaking seen that. You're a freaking weirdo. Get out of here. You're mental. <laughs> oh, wow. And... And so I, I think we're coming close to the end for the um, for the Vikings mm -hmm. stuff because I think you've filled up most. Um, oh, a few other points I want to announce is um, when we were talking about earlier about the the decoration of ships, they would decorate their their sails with the shape of a red dragon, and this became predominantly known. And you, if you saw that red sail with a dragon on it, you knew the Viking that you knew it was a Viking ship, and it, it became widespread for for for. for for the meaning of Viking, you know, ships like is is a sail that they, that most of them used. So so when they're coming up streams and, and well, going. I haven't heard of this. Well, I do know it's that's very much believed that their strips had red and white stripes, but I haven't heard of the dragons. I will definitely look into that. Yeah, Thank I you. will. I will. I'll send you the link over which, the the one that I the one that I looked at, which was earlier today, which is mm -hmm. let me just find it. Uh, this there we go. It was on History Extra, which is, I think it's pretty new, this one. It was, when was it written? It was written. Well, you see, we tend to look at archaeological evidence and drawings and stuff like mm. that. And I think most drawings depict Viking ships yeah. with striped sails. Yeah. Well, well, this was published This was published in 2015, so it's, it's relatively new. Yeah, in, relatively in recent. Yeah. Uh, where was it? I'll just find out. Uh, they were godless, which they weren't. Uh, they took where they wanted to sail away, <laughs> which is also false. They were extremely violent. Cause, cause that's if thing, this cause... is the same site, bro, I wouldn't be too sure about the dragons. No, no, no. Uh, these are myths. Uh, these uh, are all okay. myths of like, okay. they were extremely violent. You know, they took where they wanted to sail away. They were godless pagans. You know, it's all that sort of stuff. Which doesn't make any sense either. Because pagans had, had religion because they believed in the earth. Yeah, but godless to them meant that they didn't believe in... You know the one yes. almighty God. God, ba 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 ba. Um, they didn't believe in Morgan Freeman. How could they? <laughs> okay, where is it? Uh, not there. They're extremely violent, which uh, yeah, yeah. So, so like um, the Acklin of York wrote to Bishop uh, Highball, declaring, "Never before has such terror appeared in in Britain as we have now suffered from from a pagan race." So, so the Vikings. The heathens poured out the blood of saints around the altar and trampled on the bodies of saints in the temple of God, like dung in the streets. So, so this was this was the myth that Vikings were just were, were this violent, and this and this cruel, basically. No, well, they could be, they could be. Remember, they did roast an abbot on a spit. Yeah, so so it, it does follow up with like there is certainly evidence of the violent means Vikings used to suppress people, particularly in Britain. Many scales have been found with the instruments of de uh, of their death still wedged in their bones. Uh, uh, has a Viking spearhead stuck in its neck. However, while some Vikings clearly deserve their reputation as, as wolves of war, others live peacefully existence, so farming, trading, mm -hmm. integrating across the four continents, which is really interesting. Oh, they even got into Africa. This is a really interesting one. They, um, the Vikings' aggression was matched uh, or exceeded by other groups during this period. One of the most famous mm -hmm. names of the early medieval was Emperor Charlemagne, which we talked about earlier. Carried, yep. out, carried out a form of genocide on the people of Saxony in the mass Verdun in AD. 782 of his army murdered more than four. It was and a half, violent time. Four and a half thousand. Uh, okay, I think that is. I can't find that fact, but I definitely read it somewhere, so I know I read it. Uh, well, before. Fast before we end the stream today. No, I think that's. Every... Um... Ooh, how do they make chain mail? Because uh, a lot of them are depicted with wearing chainmail. Yeah, Vikings did wear chainmail. And chainmail is made by getting a small metal link. Mm -hmm. And when it's really, really hot, you hammer it closed with the others. Now, 
Callum actually has made chainmail, or yes. my other brother. Yes, yes, yes. And he managed to do it very quickly, but it is a highly skilled thing. So you need to create the rings. Yeah. And you need to link these rings together. That means dealing with a lot of hot metal. It means being able to build a forge good enough to get the metal to that temperature. So it melts. Also being able to mine, extract that metal and make it workable to purify it. So it's a very complicated process. I'm so... I'm, I'm not 100% sure how it works. <laughs> But essentially, you need to make the rings and you need to link them together. And there are different ways of doing this. Now, you can just link one to another, like in a line down. Yeah. Or you can link three to another, which creates a much thicker, much denser chain mail. And chain mail is incredibly heavy. I'm not sure if any of you have managed to get your hands on any, but it really <laughs> it is, is incredibly it heavy. It down, yes. But it's, it's, yeah. it's amazingly resistant, I uh, 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 you know, um arrow fire onto the chest because because of the way that's linked them together it, except it until hit. those b-a-s-t-e-r-d-s invented the crossbow yes and the crossbow is devastating although to be fair um with with the invention of the welsh longbow because the longbow wasn't mm. made by the english it's made by the welsh thank you very I much i know the the amount of poundage it would have could crush bones even though you were wearing chainmail it was so much impact force mm. And um, like the, the only thing that could really stop it was was the uh, was the arm, was a plate armor that was made at the time for the knights to uh, and that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, plate armor only really becomes popular in the thirteenth century. Exactly. Um, also, one of um, our viewer has has said um, if you want, if you want if you want to know any more details about if you're interested about the Vikings and and that please read the the Norwegian and Icelandic sagas. Oh yes, of course. And also look up online. It's a wonderful little website called The Viking Answer Lady. And this is a wonderful website. And it's all these little sections on every part about Norse culture. Yeah. From practical to the more cultural and divine and entertainment yeah. media values <laughs> that they have. <laughs> things they like to listen to. Yeah. So if you want to definitely go along and have a look there, yes. something I'd recommend. Well, yes. Uh, thank you, ladies, gentlemen, and humanoids. And thank you for dropping in, listening in, and carrying on. Please do join us uh, Mondays and Thursdays from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, we'll be, um, hopefully, we'll, we're going to discuss, we're going to put it about Thursday, and we'll put that up so you can see, and you can hopefully, if you're interested, share it. Let, let, let people know. Every Monday, every Thursday, 6.30 p.m., share it, get more people in, get more people to listen in, because the more the more dialogue we have with people, the more interesting these are going to be, and the more fun it's going to be. For the everyone. more the merrier. The more the merrier, always, always. So so come in, always. get your tea, get your coffee, have a sit, have a listen. And yes, tea. thank you. <laughs> Everything. Tea. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you want. You can have juice, you can have alcohol, we don't mind. Just come in and listen. <laughs> but yes, thank you so much, my, my host, The Hobbit. And thank you very much, The Giant. Wonderful. We shall see you all on Thursday. Thank you and good night. Good night. Good night.